Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Mike again. I know it's been a while since I put anything in here. Sometimes you get so busy that it's very hard to keep up and record videos. Uh, we just came back from our SCX Warpack down in Orlando. It was a fantastic expo, fantastic training. A little bit disappointed with the Mario Hotel. It was just uh, horrible. Truly, they didn't clean the rooms in the entire state until I really complained and used my way to get it done, but otherwise I wouldn't have wanted to do. Just to give you a little heads up on that, don't use the Mary Hotel in Orlando. They're not good. Uh, the rest experience, excellent. Uh, the training quality, the, um, all the teachers were amazing. I even took a Scott Manor class. He's an unbelievable uh, instructor. Luke Murray, uh, Jason uh, Maltodano, unbelievable as well. Just to name a few of the ones I remember, Bernie Thompson was there. Excellent, excellent as usual. All right, so guys, uh, the reason of the video right here, I want to share it with you. Uh, anytime that you do an oil filter housing, um, an oil pan, something that you really need to remove completely the oil from the engine and in this case uh, the valves are just completely bleed out uh, bmw recommends to do a prime which if you read their instructions is usually to disconnect the injectors and then crank the uh, engine by hand twice and then you can use the starter uh, five to ten times giving the starter uh, you know in between cranks at least 20 seconds so it cools down so you know don't burn the starter uh, that's a one way procedure to do it uh, usually also you can disconnect the fuel pump uh, part of the injector not the fuel pump sorry the injector connector from the dme which is you know you have to remove the oil filter but if you're going to do the i mean not the oil filter the air filter if you're going to do the oil filter either way you have to remove it so it's not a problem um i didn't have much to share as far as uh the repair because it's already done i will probably put just some pictures and you guys can see how i work and how we work in this shop because we are making always sure that we retest and retest make sure that we are giving the car back to the customer in optimal conditions we are making sure our customers are always happy and they have trust in us and they feel secure to take their families for a trip or you know daily base commute cars that are not going to let them on the street all right so again the procedure that i use and i found that it takes little to nothing time to connect it makes everything a lot more safer for you shop owners or for us technicians, so we're not going to be, you know, fired because, you know, we just destroy an engine. All right, so what I use, AGA Tools created this pump, which is really good, and you can use the Milwaukee. I mean, you can pretty much do this yourself. Uh, this is what they call the clean oil uh, change pump and they have adapters that you can change and this is the one uh, you connect to the oil pan at the bottom I didn't do it in this one I do have the adapter but otherwise I will have to take the plug and put the oil plug back because every single plug that you buy from AGA to goes on the oil pan is almost a hundred dollars so uh, it's a little too expensive for I understand if you have a, a fleet of cars that you don't want to um, get in and out of the shop because with this you can just connect it anywhere even in the parking lot and do an oil change so that is uh you know it might work for again a facility that does a lot of oil changes not my case not the way we work um so the way i do i put the suction i put one of the fittings in the front which is already now attached in there i open the valve and then just put the right amount of oil i usually put a little extra like a a core over core because you're gonna keep this filter always clean and with fluid uh, so the way this work now is going to go through the pump through a hose onto a filter and we can see the build pressure you will see it in a second uh, how it builds pressure through the oil filter uh, sorry oil pressure sensor which in this case is here and then through the oil filter through the oil gallery filling all the cams all the bearing on the routes and on the crankshaft lubricating every single piece that needs to be to, uh, lubricated priming the engine before you cr even crank it because i'm always afraid you know uh, let's say you're working in a car that has 200,000 miles 150,000 miles 
Is that engine even going to last the time that you try to spin it with no oil? Those bearings are going to get all scratch and it might be even a cease engine. And I've seen that happen. And that's why BMW recommends to do this because it's, it's very common. So when I saw this pump and the AJA website, I'm like, I'm, I like it. It's very expensive because actually I think it charges for this almost $2,000. No, it doesn't even come with the battery. Their tools are expensive. They're good, you know. I mean, even BMW right now, they're the BMW dealers are recommended AGA tools. Even if you're working an N63 engine and you're doing a rear main seal, you will see that you have a coolant bracket on the back that the updated part it comes from AGA straight. So he does good things. I mean, I, I can give it that. All right. So going back into here. The reason I use this is because I will be priming the engine with no engine movement. It's just pressure and that's perfect. Let me turn this on. I'm using um, eight amp battery, one of the new ones. Just gonna let us suck the seven, seven and a half cores that I have there. Let it build that pressure. As you can see there, probably gonna go around 25 to 30 PSI and you can adjust that. Sorry if I'm going a little higher on the boys, I'm trying to, uh, Go a little higher on level or volume of my voice just in case this pump is too loud. I know this microphone takes the noise away, but just to make sure that that is not a problem. But so when you do this, you are protected. The engine is now completely prime. It's the way it was before it got into your hands. And there's no way you can damage this engine. Now we are always in here. We take a full video of this. We show the customer that we're doing the prime and that protect us as a shop in case something later on happen to this engine because i mean like i said i mean are you working in a hundred and fifty thousand mile engine you just did gasket you didn't repair this engine so anything can happen not even bmw will put a warranty on this engine so why would i right but then this is why we need to protect our investments protect the customer investment and make sure that both parties are happy because this is the best way for me it takes, like I said, no time. I don't have to be, you know, cranking an engine or trying to spin the uh, engine by hand. It's done automatically. Oh, well, I have to wait in here, make sure it's building pressure, which is exactly what it is doing right now. And I just got to keep an eye on the bucket. Make sure that you're keeping it clean. Yeah, but again, it's going through a very good filter and then through the car filter. If by any chance you're working on a car that doesn't have an accessible or no oil pressure sensor, you can always get the adapters that goes here and then it comes with a fit in that will fit exactly as in here and you can just go through the filter. So not a problem at all. All right, guys, I just want to share this with you. Everything is going nice and smooth. It was again a fantastic week in Warpack. Hope I see some of you guys in there and I, you know, share some of a little bit of a conversation and I saw the flat red master in there, Brandon Stegler. I mean, it was very nice. I saw PJ too there. Uh, Mike Molesky, <laughs> sorry if I say your last name. I know it's Mike, I'm sorry, but sometimes I forgot the last name. Uh, like I said, it was very good. I saw Jerry, Jerry G from TST. He's a great guy. We have a very nice conversation. It was a great time. All right, guys, I just want to share a little bit of what I'm doing. I'm, like I said, I'm going to give you some bonus material of the repair. I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough time to go there and show you all right guys i want to share with you you know the way the car was and one thing i want to show you is uh that uh power steering reservoir and you'll see in the car i mean you can definitely see the oil leak on the oil filter housing let me see if i got more pictures well this is i mean uh that was the way it was there obviously you make a little more mess when you uh, get it out but uh, as you can see it's no belt in here and i clean everything very 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 much um, i put a new belt i always recommend to do that clean everything as you can see you know i'm going very very uh deep into clean make sure the surface uh made in surfaces are perfect because that's what is going to make it less um, this is also, you know, for the customer records. That's why we always take all these pictures. Um, hopefully the video, or sorry, yeah, the video is not catching too much of the uh, flickering of the of the actual screen. Uh, again, we show that we put new filters. This is our uh, Mali. 
which is same as BMW, they use them. And make sure they always you replace diesel rims, always. It's done, don't, don't ever not do it. Uh, let me take you over to the next day, which is now today. And this is on the oil filter housing. I mean, actually, let me, let me go back. I want to show you, you guys, that, oops, too much. That oil pan, that might be 21. We're working so many cars in here. And this is just my pictures again. I oh, yeah, right here. I want to show you, this is an inspection that we do. So you can see, look at the, this is the oil pan right here. This is the transmission to oil pan connection. This is on the passenger side. I mean, it was just covered in oil. I wanted to show you that. Let me see if it's anything else. And this is just regular pictures that I take. So we see how the levels and fluids are, etc. right? Uh, all right, so let's go over to today. So you guys can see. I always clean up uh, before I remove the oil pan. And by the way, you can see that I take everything away. I don't like to work with the soft frame hanging. Most I see in a lot of mechanics do it that way. I don't. I put my um, uh, arson mark, arson marker, or let me think. Uh, this one. This is a really, really good engine support. It's really good for BMWs. I got this one. I don't know, maybe seven, eight years, and that's fantastic. So what I do is I just put this on the tap. I make sure before I race the car uh, or not raise the car, they put the bracket that I already removed the four bolts for the whole um, motor mounts or the nuts on the top, either way you like to do it. And then you can lift it out when you see that the engine start to move, then you're good. Then you can take the self frame, which, you know, I take the rack and pinion, make sure that you put always a lock on the steering so it's not going to spin and you don't damage the clock spring. So those are just steps that you need to make sure that you always do before any repair like this. Make sure that your battery is disconnected so you're not going to short the alternator or anything in the middle of the work and then create a fire and destroy, you know, something. Uh, like, let's keep going. I mean, this is uh, also was saying, you know, I like to do a preliminary cleanup so I'm not working with a fully dirty uh, soft frame or uh, part. And then I just take this pen, I take a small chair I have, and I finish cleaning it there. I find it really easy. Uh, again, as you can see, I clean every single surface really good. That's an oil pen after me. And you can see it looks like brand new. And I want to make sure that this lasts a very long time. Uh, you can see right here, OEM bolts. Don't ever reuse aluminum bolts. They have to be discarded. Um, same thing in the surface of the block. Don't use anything that might scratch. Uh, so I will use always a 3M. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about so you guys can get it too. And this is, this is what I use. So this is very fine and that will not make any marks that can make any leaks and you are again doing the right way. Um, this, this is, I always take a picture of the torques and position of the balls and everything. This is a little blurry, but uh, uh, that's, that's what I, well, this is actually a picture of a picture. So that's why it's like that. This is just for the records. Again, uh, just showing that I put also a mark, a marker on every single bolt after I torque it. And you will see, see the white and black. I got black for the first and then white for the last. I want to make sure that everything is stored to specs and nothing is left behind like that. You know, you got something visual that is, to is showing you that it's already torque. Um, this is, we put uh, brand new motor mounts. So I recommend the customer, you know, no labor. If you just get the parts, we can install it for you. And he agree. It's just the best time. You know, he saves a lot of time doing it this way. And either way, we already got the suffering mount or I already got the suffering mount. You can see I put a brand new belt. Everything is nice and clean. You can see right here. I mean, it took my time to really, really detail his engine. And I always do that in every single repair that I do. This is the oil for the house. And even in here, I clean the entire engine because usually when you get problems with the oil filter house and the oil goes down this way under the intake and this is what it paddles. And it's like a constant leak that will go even uh, there or stay there even after you do the repair because you don't clean that. And it takes 
a long time to that to stop and uh, you know it's just it's not fair so i like to clean everything really good um i was also doing some suspension uh, work for him because of uh, um, a small head uh, but i want to show you that you can see i put you know my markers in everything that is tight even ball joints because i don't want to if i look i, I replace the wheel bearing as, as i was saying uh, this is, you know, for you guys to see that every single bolt in here and in here has that white mark because it's torque. Torque to specs, everything is good. Uh, then I seen that this car needed, it was a dry shaft bearing. Uh, it got damaged. Um, it's not really an uncommon problem, um, but AI yeah, it got damaged. And so we were, oh, he's lucky that these boot didn't break because I've seen it many times when this happened that this boot get destroyed and it's like right now a month away uh, the whole dry shaft is also a month away so we got the the center bearing uh, luckily none of the u joints got damaged and he, you know he takes care of his car as you can see he's doing a big repair and he likes the car so definitely i want to make sure that he loves it after i get it back to him and this is you know this is our goal in this shop make sure the customer love their car stay loving their car and trust us all right, so I'll keep going on here. I just always show, you know, after the repairs, uh, that's the last picture. So, yeah, that's what I want to show you guys, uh, a procedure or, you know, repairs that I do. Uh, everything is really good in the shop. I'm very happy here. A little bit of a long drive. Uh, at least I wasn't used to this. Um, I'm probably like 45 minutes away from the shop. So it's 45 minutes in the morning, 45 minutes in the afternoon. But you know what? I really don't care the peace of mind coming to work in a nice place where they take care of you, where they really care for you and they care for the customers. It's, it makes me happy. You know, I love what I do. I, I'm, I'm a very happy technician. I'm a happy person. I, um, <laughs> they want to give me this. It's like my life is good, really good <laughs> uh, because I'm always, you know, sharing happiness as i go i tell people you know live live sad for tomorrow try to be happy today all right okay guys i'll talk to you later have a nice day uh don't forget to subscribe <laughs> i got a little lonely video talking now all right see you next time bye bye